Hi, my name is Joe from the Victorian Malifaux Recovery Group and the National Recovery Team. I'm here to show you how we monitor Malifaux mounds. Um, monitoring is perhaps one of the most important things you can do to help conserve the species. There are two, two gadgets that we depend on quite a lot and there's overlap between them. One is a GPS, of course, to help us find our way and the other is a smartphone that helps us collect the data. These are the critical things. Both of them have GPS's in them. The GPS units are a bit more accurate, but you can do all your monitoring just with, with a phone. So we have the, the dedicated GPS's, uh, partly because they're, they're more accurate, yes. but really for safety, because we don't want to have anybody out there who, doesn't, who can't get back to their car because they've, they've turned around. So it's just a quick check to make sure you're actually at the right mound because sometimes mounds are quite close to other mounds. One of the most important things we do is take a photo of the mound. The photo provides us with an, a lot of information that we can pull up and check whenever we want. So to take a photo we want the whole mound in view. We want to see the, uh, the photo card as well and we want to see a little bit of the background as well. So just press the button, take a photo if it looks okay in CyberTracker, if you're happy with that and I'm happy with that, just move on. If those cross sticks are, are still there, then that's a clear indication that the birds have not been back. Okay, so there are, there are six basic profiles that we use to describe things, and, and we do this just in a categorical way to make it very simple and very fast. This one we would say is a profile four, meaning it's a big dome, all right? It's a, it's a big dome. It's not your typical Malifaux mound. This is an active mound uh, with eggs inside. Most mounds you see are not being used by the birds and they will be a crater that we call a profile one. And then there are various uh, grades between them. Um, but if you see a mound like this, it's either an active mound or a mound that was active in, the, in previous seasons but abandoned and has never been touched since. One of the simplest measures is just whether the mound, whether we define the mound as, as scraped or not. And the simple test is just to rough up some of the mound surface. And if you can see a clear difference between the two, then the mound is definitely not scraped. In this case, there is no difference between what I disturb and the surrounding mound. So the whole mound, we say, is scraped. Another thing we, we record is whether there are eggshells on the mound. In this case you can see some quite large pieces of eggshell on the mound and we just record whether there's some, none or lots. In this case I can see easily more than 10 pieces around the mound so we'll say lots of eggshell. It's very telling if it's got a few scattered herbs it's not an active mound. Same thing for moss and lichen. Well there's no moss and lichen here so fox scats, we're very concerned about foxes as major predators and their scats provide us with a bit of information. The first bit of information is just that foxes have been here and the quantity of fox scats gives us a bit of an index of um, how common they are. We also collect them and when money is available we have them analysed to see what animals they've been eating because within this scat is a record of all the animals that it's eaten over the last few days. We're very interested in collecting the Malifaux feathers and the reason is that the genetic material is in the feathers, in the shaft, in the very base of the feather, in there. And that can tell us quite a lot about the birds. So wherever we see feathers we collect them um, and we're very careful not to touch that end of the feather because that is the end that has all the genetic material and we don't want to confuse our genetic material with the bird's genetic material. So we collect them like that and likewise with the larger feathers we hold them at this end and we pop them in a bag and we store them for the geneticists to have a go at when we've got a lot of them. So for here the rim is coming through here yep. and we're mostly concerned in, in this area now you can see even without doing this that there is a light crust here. 
and that's from the rain and that. And the, and the test, once again, is just to dig your hand in and see how, how it fractures. Yeah. Whereas if you try the same thing with loose sand, of course, there's going to be nothing. But if, you, if there's a crust, you'll see it. Okay? And all we're doing there is recording something that is, is, is you know, is, is going to be useful. One of the first things I look at if somebody says a mound is, is active and we're not sure, will be whether it's got a crust. So I'd say some here, some crust. It's not, it's not complete. Sometimes, you know, a mound will have a very heavy crust. This is just a light rain crust. Okay, so to measure the mound, we've already laid the tape out, or at least in this case, a string line. And this is the five meter mark, and this is 5.5. So I'm gonna say the diameter of this mound is about 5.4 meters, or 540 centimeters, so we will record that. And to estimate the height of the mound, we'll put a vertical measure here, and I'll look across, and in this case, I'm gonna choose 70 centimeters, and line that up with the other side of the top of the mound and the other pole, the height of the mound is about 70 centimetres. The last thing we do before we leave a mound is to place cross sticks on it. Now ordinarily we wouldn't place cross sticks on an active mound if we're sure that it's active, but in this case we're not entirely sure that this mound is active because it's looking a bit dishevelled here. So we'll just place some cross sticks on top of the mound and they won't disturb the birds. In fact, the birds will just knock them over as soon as they come. What we're doing with cameras is we're placing eight to 10 cameras scattered through each of these monitoring sites. And the idea there is that these cameras stay there all year. They've got a little solar panel and a battery and they take photos of anything that's passing. And what we're trying to do is to get an index of fox abundance, a slightly better index than the fox cats. Although, who knows, I mean, we might find that the fox cats is okay. But also all the other animals that live out here. And it's very important because we don't know what the, um, you know, how the other animals impact on mallowfowl. Predators, of course, are a fairly conspicuous, um, you know, issue because they, actually kill mallowfowl, but kangaroos and goats and, and you know, rabbits and hares for that matter, they eat the food that would cause mallowfowl to, to starve, so it's much the same. Um, by tracking all of these animals, we can get a much better idea of how they might be impacting on mallowfowl. Gathering correct data and photos at mallowfowl mounds is very, very important. Thanks for being part of the association and for helping to track these wonderful birds and protect them.